Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so welcome to a, uh, another edition of my virtual town hall. Um, today we have, and we're honored to have four amazing guest speakers with us today. Um, uh, leading it all is uh, our state treasurer, Fiona Ma, um, Zira Mara, uh, myself, of course. Um, and I believe, uh, oh, no, those are the three. Um, so uh, we'll leave a few more minutes for you guys to, um, for everyone to jump on um, and we'll begin uh, shortly. We just want the residents to kind of some time to um, log in and all the participants to get all their um, you know, screens on, microphones on, and, and if you have questions, make sure to know that near the 1230 mark is when we start our Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, line them up. Uh, we'll try and answer uh, as many as we can live um, at the same time, we'll be texting some of the answers as well. Um, so just bear with us a few more minutes to have everyone log in. Um, and if you're out there also watching this on Facebook, um, no, you don't have to log in on Zoom. Um, you can watch this on Facebook Live and then we'll also see your questions and responses there. And I'll also pull those uh, to address on the Zoom chat. Um, so yeah, give us a few minutes and we'll begin shortly. Excellent. Um, are, are the uh, presenters ready? Um, and I believe everyone's been able to jump on. Um, just gearing up face, making sure face, ah, Facebook Live is now back on. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so um, again, uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, another session of uh, my virtual town hall. Um, so today, uh, leading our town hall, uh, we have our, and we're, we're gracious by her presence, um, and she gave us her time to kind of come out and give us some of her um, new initiatives and programs that the uh, her treasurer office is doing. Um, so today we have a uh, state treasurer, Fiona Mom. Uh, she is California's 34th state treasurer. She was elected on November 6, 2018, uh, with more voters, which is close to 7.8 million, uh, than any other candidate for treasurer in the state's history. Uh, she is the first woman of color and the first woman's, woman certified CPA uh, elected to the position. Um, that's a, a phenomenal feat to first be the first uh, per person of color at the same time the first uh, woman uh, to achieve that. And the, the amount of votes, um, they were able to achieve shows the amount of confidence they have, especially in your background. Um, I mean, I've worked with you. I'm honored to have worked with you. Uh, I, I know our budget, especially during this COVID pandemic is, is tough to handle. Um, but knowing that you're there, fully confident and, and excited that you're here today and uh, you know, giving us some news and some love and giving the city of Hawthorne some love. Um, we also have today uh, Ziomara. Hopefully I got that one right. <laughs> Uh, Pena. Uh, she is the California Program Director and National Latino Entrepreneurship Director for the Small Business Majority, a national small business advocacy organization. Her focus is on strengthening relationships with policymakers, small business owners, and organizations across California, uh, including overseeing policy recommendation and advocacy work, as well as managing statewide educational initiatives around workforce, entrepreneurship, retirement, and healthcare. So basically everything that we're kind of struggling with now and dealing with during this whole COVID pandemic, uh, you seem like the point person to uh, contact and can address a lot of these issues. Um, I, I appreciate that you guys are both taking time out of your busy schedule. It's not easy. Um, so coming out to the city of Hawthorne and giving us this moment of time, especially this Q and A, it's phenomenal. So um, I wanna thank you from now. Um, of course, I'll thank you at the end, but thank you guys for giving me your time. Um, and then I'll hand it off to you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Haydar. Um, you know, it's always great working with you and uh, seeing, you know, energy and leadership at Hawthorne. I've had a number of occasions to come to visit some of your businesses as well as to see you. So thank you uh, for your leadership. Uh, I also uh, look forward to hearing uh, Ciamara's presentation. We have done a number of webinars with the Small Business Majority. They're a wonderful organization with uh, 
um, very uh, useful information and very knowledgeable speakers. So I'm sure uh, Ms. Pena is, is, is no um, exception. So uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I am still a CPA. Um, my uh, parents uh, coming to this country wanted us to be one of the lead professions, a lawyer, engineer, accountant, or a doctor. And so um, being good at math, my parents decided I should be an accountant. So like the dutiful first uh, child, I went to the Rochester Institute of Technology, uh, studied accounting, got my first job with one of the big eight accounting firms, Ernst & Winnie in the real estate tax group. Uh, and then after five years, decided to quit and start my own business. And that was the first time at the age of 28 that I got actively engaged in the political process, understanding that small businesses are the backbone of our economy, yet it is so difficult to run a small business, as Hadar and your dad uh, probably can attest, right? Lots of uh, regulations and rules and audits and fees and, and filings. Uh, and so I um, started at that time to be a small business advocate. I participated in the 1995 White House Conference on Small Business under Bill Clinton. And in every political job that I've had, this is my fourth elected position, uh, I've always uh, had a focus on small business and this job is no exception. Um, we used to do a lot of in-person uh, seminars and due to COVID, we have now pivoted uh, to webinars. This is probably my 50th uh, webinar that we have been um, participating in, but we have also uh, compiled resource guides uh, that are updated uh, on real time on my website, www.treasure.ca.gov. So when you log on to my website, you'll see two buttons. One is the covid19.ca.gov uh, button, which is our official uh, state of California website. And we encourage people to go to that website uh, to get the latest health um, statistics, uh, the different phases for opening California for the governor, uh, Gavin Newsom's latest executive orders, uh, and a very extensive uh, FAQ sheet. Um, they also have uh, phone numbers uh, that you can call if you need assistance. Uh, and they are open and ready to assist. The other button is my COVID-19 resource guides where you will find resources for small businesses, for nonprofits, individuals, tax relief and food. And coming this week, we are also gonna be compiling a seniors resource guide because a lot of seniors during this time are also struggling and not knowing where to go uh, for different services. I know my mother-in-law the other day day was saying her, you know, her water bills were going up and her energy, she's got the energy um, discount for seniors, but uh, there has got to be other programs out there that can help seniors during this time. And so that inspired me to have my outreach team compile that uh, seniors resource guide. Um, the treasurer's office, a little bit about us. We are one of the eight constitutional offices. Uh, in a typical year, over $2 trillion comes through our bank. So I am the state's banker. So every revenue, interest, tax fee, fine, penalty comes through my office. I also manage a portfolio of about $100 billion in short-term investments. 70% is for the state. Uh, that is not being utilized. And then 30% is for local government. So Hadar, the city of Hawthorne uh, is one of our clients and we invest for the city. So thank you very much. And we just wanna uh, relay to you and your constituents that your money is safe with LAIF. Um, I also issue um, all the state's uh, general obligation and infrastructure bonds. Last year, we issued about 14 different bonds, uh, which is going to make a big difference in keeping people working. Even during this pandemic, we are still continuing to issue bonds as, um, as we have found that people are uh, still very uh, supportive. Uh, they're very um, you know, excited when California is issuing bonds because that is a safe place 
uh, to, um, to invest your money. And the credit rating agencies, even during this pandemic and the downturns, uh, have not downgraded us. So that says a lot to the state of California, uh, to all of us, that the rate, credit rating agencies uh, have a lot of confidence in us. And we do have to thank Governor Jerry Brown for really tightening his belt when he was here over the last eight years. He got elected after the Great Recession and really did a great job in paying down our debt uh, and you know, doing um, you know, whatever he could uh, to make sure that we secured about a $26 billion in our rainy day funds, which has gone a long way. Unfortunately, as you know, the governor just signed his budget last week, which shows a $54 billion deficit. Uh, some of the ways that we are balancing is through our rainy day fund, uh, some of the deferrals, uh, some of the borrowings from different agencies that have money uh, sitting in different pots. And there is about a $14 billion contingency that is going to be uh, triggered if the federal government does not uh, give us more money. However, uh, I think uh, Ciamara will be talking about some of the federal programs and the stimulus packages. Um, last month, the House of Representatives, led by Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, passed a $3 trillion HEROES Act. Uh, the Senate has not yet acted on any or all of that. And then on July 1st, uh, the House again passed a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. So there is a lot of money on the table. We are hoping that the uh, U.S. Senators uh, get to work soon and pass some of these uh, proposals so that we can see some more relief at the federal and state, uh, um, at the state and at the local levels. Um, I also just want to take a moment uh, to let folks know, I mean, I'm sure you know, Hadar, uh, that the, uh, the cases for the coronavirus has been spiking uh, as uh, businesses and restaurants and shops have been opening. Um, people still need to remember that there is no vaccine at this moment. And people are still spreading the virus and we need to remember to wear our masks, uh, to respect social distancing, uh, and to do everything we can to make sure that we are keeping ourselves and our family, friends, and coworkers safe at the same time. We're hoping that there is a vaccine by the end of this year and we can go back to our, our normal activities um, 20, in 2021. But until then, um, please be aware and be diligent uh, in, in all the health and safety guidelines that we have. Um, I have a couple more minutes. So I want to talk a couple uh, about a couple of other programs that I administer. I chair 16 different boards and commissions, uh, two of which help finance affordable housing. Uh, we uh, give out the uh, bonds as well as the 4% and the 9% tax credits. And I know that the city of Hawthorne has a lot of uh, housing uh, uh, projects or potential housing projects as we have driven around uh, and looked at some of those sites. Uh, so now is the time. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom allocated more money to our multifamily housing uh, program that is really going to try to help working uh, folks like nurses and teachers and, and firefighters um, um, find uh, quality housing. And of course, we have a lot of programs to help those that are lower income, homeless, uh, those with mental illness. Um, and so we encourage any of the developers out there who are uh, thinking about building, now is a great time to do that. Uh, I also have another uh, agency called Cal Savers. Uh, so for any company uh, that does not offer a pension plan to their employees, if they employ five or more employees, eventually they will have to register their employees under my Cal Savers program. Uh, it is similar to a Roth IRA program. 
but what we're trying to do is encourage people to save. And we know that when people uh, have money automatically deducted from their paycheck every month and they don't have to see it, uh, they are building that little nest egg up uh, and also um, you know, planning for that uh, rainy day. I also chair the ScholarShare 529 board. Uh, ScholarShare 529 is a college savings account. Uh, I had three couples that had babies recently and I said, I hope you will consider uh, opening up a ScholarShare 529 account. Uh, it is professionally managed, uh, very low cost. And again, you will help start saving for your college uh, education, your kids' college education, uh, and hopefully keep them out of high student loan debt. I also have programs. Uh, for small businesses under my California Pollution Financing Control Agency. But the program is CalCap for Small Businesses. And we are really the lenders of last resort for those um, folks who are having a hard time uh, getting any of the PPP money or the EIDL money. Um, and so uh, we have a program as well as iBank. And that website is iBank.ca.gov. Uh, and the governor, Gavin Newsom, also allocated a certain sum of money to uh, the iBank so that they can also lend out money for small businesses to those that did not get any of the federal stimulus uh, money. Um, let's see, I have one last program I'll talk about, Cal Able. Uh, that is also a new program for anyone who has been diagnosed with a disability under the age of 26. You can now open up a Cal Able account administered under my office and save up to $15,000 a year in that person's name. Uh, in the past, you could only save up to $2,000 in a person's name without jeopardizing some of the um, other benefits, the um, medical and, and health and human service benefits uh, for these folks. And we are working hard in Congress to expand the age of onset to 46 years old because we know that some people do develop some sort of disability as an adult. So we're hoping that Congress uh, will uh, pass that ABLE Age Adjust Adjustment Act so that we can expand the, um, uh, the program uh, to more folks. And before I turn it over to Siamara, um, I just wanna remind everyone to please take a minute. It takes less than two minutes to fill out your census form. It is nine simple questions and it is so important uh, that we make sure we get all of our people counted. And I'll give you a, a, a real life example. Uh, back in uh, April, the state of California received $9.2 billion from the CARES Act. And the amount of money that came back was based on the number of people that were counted in our census 10 years ago. We know that our population has increased and there are about 11 million people that are hard to count. And we hope that you will all uh, make sure that you are filling out that form for your household, encourage all your friends and family because as we see right now, how much money is coming from the federal government, every dollar that comes from the federal government to our 50 states, we compete for that money based on the number of people that we uh, have registered here in the state. So we encourage you uh, to please take a little time and it's www.mycensus2020.gov uh, to register uh, for the census. And I will just turn it over to Siamara and I will be back with questions and answers later and to address any other issues that we have not addressed um, here uh, before. So thank you very much again, Haydar, and I will turn it over to Siamara. Thank you so much, Treasurer. Gee, it's always hard to go after such, a, a, um, such an amazing speaker and leader for the state. Um, we are, all, as you mentioned, Small Business Majority has been thrilled to work uh, with the Treasurer's Office on a variety of different issues, um, including Cal Savers and ensuring that business owners have access to the program itself, and now ensuring folks can tap into the iBank program and the $100 million that has been allocated to support business owners left out of the federal relief programs. 
So just briefly, my name is Xiomara. I am the California Program Director and the National Latino Entrepreneurship Director for Small Business Majority. Our organization has been around since 2005, helping to support small business owners and entrepreneurs, really with the hopes of trying to create an inclusive economy that works for all. And the work that we do typically falls into one of two categories. It's around ensuring that business owners have the opportunity to create high quality, uh, good paying jobs by accessing uh, benefits like CalSAVERS, um, paid family leave, health care through Covered California or Covered California for Small Business. Um, and our other section of our work is around ensuring that folks have the access to reaching economic sustainability and economic mobility through the power of entrepreneurship and all the other issues that fall in between. So connecting folks to transparent access to capital, um, connecting folks to resources around technical assistance, um, connecting folks to tech resources. Um, we're doing some work in Riverside County to support business owners that are looking to become home cooked, um, home cooked ready. And so we have a variety of different programs. And as you can imagine, back in March, uh, a lot of our focus was redirected. And we also had a pivot to ensure that we were emergently in responding to the emergency needs of small businesses. Um, as reference, this has been an incredibly difficult time for small business owners and their employees and the community at large here in California. And we recognize that we still have a ways to go, even as we're starting to see some parts of our state reopen. Uh, the reality that the treasurer mentioned, our budget shortfall, the economy, um, is we still have a, a roadmap ahead of us. And so as a business owner, joining these teletown halls, getting plugged into your local business ecosystem is one of the most important things you can be doing during this time to ensure that you're um, building a business resiliency model that can help you stay in business for years to come. And so I want to focus uh, my remarks on the two federal programs as well as a new state initiative um, that was announced by the governor's office yesterday. And I'll start off by talking about those federal relief packages uh, first and give some quick input or insight as to the fifth uh, package that we believe will uh, be happening. So first and foremost, um, about $659 billion has been allocated for the Paycheck Protection Program or the PPP program. Lots of folks have heard about this program already, um, launched back in April, and it has gone through some changes recently with the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act having passed just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so important to note that business owners, there's still money available. $659 billion was approved, but $100 billion still remains in the fund. Um, and the benefit to this product is that you as a business owner can potentially have it be converted to a grant or have a significant portion of your um, loan, if not 100% of your loan, forgiven um, if you spend it as it's designed to be spent around payroll or paying yourself if you're a self-employed individual. Um, there are other eligible expenses, which include utility, rent, and I'll talk a little bit more about the, the fine print details. But the program was a uh, part of the package in the CARES Act, and since there was an additional allocation when the PPP, first round of PPP dollars uh, dried up, so that brought the, the total to the 659. It was an all approved at once. Um, one of the benefits of the, in, in, in addition to approving the Paycheck Protection Act through the stimulus packages, we also saw the approval of the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program, which, is, uh, which was launched back in late April here in California via the Economic Development Department. Um, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program provides additional benefits for folks that are unemployed and for folks that traditionally cannot access unemployment. And so this includes your self-employed individuals. If you're a business owner, you don't pay into the fund typically and you wouldn't qualify for it, but because of the circumstances with the pandemic, that is now something that you can qualify for. Um, so that was also included as part of one of the federal relief bills. 
in the second federal relief bill, um, the Coronavirus Family First Act, it was included an extension on paid family leave uh, for the reasons around coronavirus. And so just to give you an idea of what has happened since March. Now, um, with uh, some of the conversations that are unfolding right now, just to give you a little bit of uh, updates, uh, we know that congressional leaders say that there will be a fifth coronavirus relief bill approved by Congress. Um, the administration on Tuesday asked Congress to pass a new bill um, by August, um, but with a smaller price tag than some of the bills that we have seen, some of the packages that we've seen in the past. Um, some of the differences, uh, there are some differences between um, uh, elected officials in the Senate as well as in the House as to what should be what all should be included in the bill, but we recognize that there is a consensus that uh, Congress will approve something. One of the things that I want to flag is there's conversations around potentially um, doing some of that state relief that uh, Treasurer Ma referenced, in addition to potentially um, making some adjustments to have increased paycheck, another, another allotment of paycheck protection uh, program uh, loans and so with with tighter requirements eligibility requirements and so just wanted to flag for folks that that is something that is still in the works and as we continue to get more details um, we will absolutely be keeping our folks um, up to date and up to speed so you're welcome to register or sign up to our newsletter where we frequently send out these um, remar reminders. I always like to let folks know what's happening at the federal level because it does affect us here, you know, in California. Um, so I'm going to go back a little bit and focus a little bit more on the finer print details on the Paycheck Protection Program because I know some folks are still looking for capital and as we continue down this road of reopening and bringing back your employees, um, figuring out where you're at with your business, it could still be something that you are looking to apply for. So the program was initially set to expire on June 30th. There has been an extension, so you have now until August 8th to apply. The loans could range in size, but essentially, and, and the qualifying um, and the qualification of how much you can qualify for varies on the business type. So if you are a, an independent contractor, you would look at your Schedule C, line 41, and multiply that amount by 2.5. Um, if you just, if, if you have employees, you would take your pay, and you're a standard business that has been in business for more than a year, you would take the total number of uh, your salaries for employees, not those over $100,000. It's limited to the salaries of employees of the first $100,000. And then you would find the um, monthly average, monthly average uh, salary that you, a salary expense that you have, multiply that amount by 2.5, and that would give you your loan amount. Um, for this particular program, it is an SBA backed program, but you do not apply for it directly through the SBA. You apply through financial intermediaries. And this could be your bank. It could be community development financial institution, which we highly recommend since those are local alternative lenders if you don't have banking relationships. Um, it could be another online lender that has been approved by the SBA, although we caution folks to be careful in, with online lenders since there are a number of different type of structures. Uh, some are online marketplaces and some are online short-term lenders. And so we just caution uh, you all to um, work with a lender potentially that's local or one of the online marketplace lenders. Um, the loans cannot be more than $10 million. Many small businesses are going to qualify for much less than that. And whatever is not forgiven um, will have to be repaid within uh, with a loan terms of repayable at 1% interest over two years. However, if you're just applying for it, the repayable terms would be extended to five years. Um, so that was something that was an adjustment through the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act. And I wanna talk a little bit about the, the forgiveness features as well, um, since I know that folks do have some questions about, you know, will I get this, 
well, I, I want to apply or I already applied, but now I'm looking at the forgiveness application and I'm really confused. So there's two applications. One is the new easy application, and I'll talk about who can use that one. And then one is the full forgiveness application. But before I dive into those, I want to just quickly talk about the Paycheck Protection Flexibility Act and what changed there. So the original PPP requirements were an eight week covered period. So the moment you got the loan, you had from that period, eight weeks to spend it before June 30th, typically. Um, the deadline to rehire staff was June 30th. Uh, the threshold on what you could spend the loan on was in order for it to be qualifying for full forgiveness, it was 75% had to be spent on payroll and 25% could be spent on non-payroll eligible expenses. And you must have had to rehire your staff prior to the pre uh, to pre-pandemic levels in order to qualify for the full forgiveness. It prohibited delaying payment of your uh, payroll taxes and the unforgivable portion of the loan was set that you would repay it at, within two years um, at 1% interest. So with this new flexibility act, now you have a 24 week covered period. And if you had received a loan under the eight week covered period, you could try to go back to your lender and see if they are willing to change the loan terms to give you a more extended covered period. Um, so that's something just important to keep in mind. The deadline to rehire your staff has been pushed back to 12.30 p.m. Um, I'm sorry, the, the, to December 31st um, rather than June 30th. So that gives you a little bit more time, right, to bring your employees back or to rehire your staff to pre-pandemic levels. The threshold has also changed. So 60% must be spent on payroll and 40% can be spent on non-payroll expenses. So again, a little bit more flexibility for how you can use, um, for how you can use the funding. Um, also, this is important. The reduction in workforce to pre-pandemic levels won't impact your forgiveness if you are unable to rehire your staff, your former employee. You are able to demonstrate the inability to rehire your former employee. And you demonstrate an inability to return to the same level of business activity before uh, February 15th. So what does that mean? And what does that translate to? Documentation, documenting everything. You know, if you're sending, if you're trying to recall your employees, you would absolutely, um, you would absolutely try to connect with your employees via mail, have document, you know, a, an actual record that you can demonstrate to your lender and then possibly back to the SBA since you'll be putting together your paycheck protection uh, program forgiveness application. And so documenting is really important and you don't have to do it alone. There are these great resources and I'm sure um, Councilman uh, Awad has already um, referenced them. The Small Business Development Center Network are great resources where you can get free one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to support your, your Paycheck Protection Program initial application or the forgiveness application. So important to note that. Um, additionally, new borrowers now have the five-year option rather than the two-year option, and you do have the opportunity to delay your payroll taxes. Um, just want to also make, make a point to, before I turn it back over, because um, I think I'm running short on time now, um, it, that the SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan product, which is a loan, there is no forgiveness there, um, is available and it is open. And so if you are looking for additional funds, I would highly recommend that you visit the SBA's COVID-19 website and apply for that specific um, economic injury disaster loan product. The benefit to applying also is that you, when you apply, you could potentially qualify to receive an economic injury disaster loan advance, which is calculated at $1,000 per employee, up to 10 employees, up to $10,000 max. Um, so really important to know that that is still a resource available to you at the federal level. And before I turn it over, uh, just want to announce Yesterday, the governor, um, Governor Newsom, proclaimed, um, issued a proclamation declaring July 2020 as California's 
for all Small Business Month. Additionally, uh, the Shop Safe, Shop Local campaign was announced. This has been a project of the Governor's Task Force on Business and Jobs Recovery. And the campaign has a new website which connects you to a whole host of resources free consulting in 31 different languages, um, resources and offers from partners to help businesses operate safely and build a digital footprint. So there's great technical part, tech, technology partners there. The latest industry guidance and county variances, um, access to personal protective equipment through the safe, safelymakingca.org, California's new PPE marketplace, and a free digital media toolkit for business owners and their part and, and any business groups that are working to get the word out on how to stay in business and stay safe. So just want to let you all know that was just announced yesterday. It's a really cool campaign. You can download some great infographics and a blog and a whole bunch of other things. So um, with that, I'll turn it back over. Thank you so much. Um. That was a fountain of information. Um, again, thank you guys so much for um, providing these resources to the community and, and working through this um, pandemic um, and staying vigilant and on, especially on where the money's going. Um, it, it's very hard, especially now with the federal government tightening the rope um, on not only local municipalities, but on states as well. Um, so having that tough fight on your plate and continue to push forward, I, I thank the both of you. Um, so now we're going to start on our Q&A portion of the um, town hall. Um, and I'm happy to say there's, there's quite a few questions um, here. Let's see. We'll start with... Uh, uh, this is from uh, Bishop John Richardson. Um, Bishop, thank you for uh, joining us today on this call. Um, Love the congregation, uh, ha have a wonderful um, energy and, and vibe at the church. Um, his question today is, do churches qualify for this program or any uh, financial assistance program? Yes, so it, it all, all honestly boils down to the, the classification, but if you are structured as a nonprofit organization, which many churches are, then you would qualify. The, the, qualify, the nonprofits that are not qualifier right now are those classified as lobbyist organizations, so a C6, which for example, some of the chambers of commerces are, and so there is a, a, a hope that there could be an expansion to include some of the smaller chambers of commerce that could benefit. But if you're a C3, you can qualify. And also, most of the programs at the state, nonprofits do apply for those as well. Um, uh, now, to go about um, applying for those as a nonprofit or as a church, uh, should they visit the two websites you guys were mentioning from the very beginning, or where should they specifically um, look at or click on? Well, for us, yes, you can go to, again, my website, www.treasure.ca.gov. Uh, I also have a dedicated email uh, line, and that is askfiona at treasure.ca.gov. And maybe you or Chris can put that into the chat because I uh, don't seem to know whether it's going to everybody or just that one um, person. So yes, please also, if you're a church and you have questions, you can always um, email me again at askfiona at treasure.ca.gov and Catherine will be more than happy to either email you back or call you back uh, with the different resource um, uh, availabilities or links, etc. I'll also just briefly mention we have a platform called Venturize.org, which maps out um, a variety of different resources, including lenders, PPP uh, lenders. Um, I think that's a great place to start. For nonprofits, one of the resources I've found to be extremely helpful for folks is the Fiscal Strength for Nonprofit or FMA um, website, it's fmaonline.net. They have frequent webinars and it's really, really focused on supporting nonprofits and applying and forgiveness and all that. And so I think that that's also a really great resource since I know that some of the resources are specifically focused on for-profit organizations. So a really great question there. Yeah, and so again, my resource guide also has a specific one for nonprofits. 
And also um, the small business development centers, uh, there are a number of them around the state that are available to provide free uh, consultation and you know packaging. If you're interested in applying for a PPP, you can go to your small business development center and ask them to help you uh, submit those packages uh, to the small business administration or your bank. Um, and that's what they're there uh, to do. They are funded by the US Small Business Administration as well as the state of California. So just be careful as CMR has said about scams. You know, people pretending to be uh, a government agency or offering, you know, these free services and you get in there and then all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're um, you know, trying to hit you up uh, for different um, money. Uh, just to remind folks that government, as Hadar knows, we will never call a constituent and ask you for your social security number, your bank account. We'll never ask you to make a payment by credit card or go down to your 7-Eleven with, uh, with a cash payment. Just be careful these days. There are people out there impersonating government officials, you know, attorneys, accountants, uh, and others who are, um, you know, pretending to be able to help you, but just be really careful. Do not give your private information to anyone over the phone or on the internet. Uh, thank you for those responses. Um, you know, speaking on small businesses, uh, we have another question from Cindy Hernandez. Uh, what is being considered a small business? Uh, there have been many cases where large corporations are applying to and getting approved for loans that are meant for small businesses. Yeah, so one of the things that in the last, in the additional, um, in the second round of PPP dollars that there was a additional requirements and as part of that money was allocated to CDFIs, um, community development financial institutions, which by and large tend to work with smaller businesses. And, you know, one of the things that is also important to note is that Monday we saw a release of a lot of the PPP information as to who benefited. I think that that also um, <clears throat> points to the investments and the allocations that the state has also made to support business owners that were left out of the federal uh, loan programs. And so through the iBank program and that state loan guarantee program, business owners can connect directly with a community development financial institution, which again, we think about a bank as being a financial institution, CDFI, if you don't have a banking relationship, a great place to build a some relationship and to access capital even if you've had some things on your credit they can work with you they're a flexible lender and they're a really great resource for business owners and so that's one of the changes that was um was made in the second round of ppp dollars um in terms of what's being qualified as a small business in the language, in the initial language of the PPP, it was any business with less than 500 employees. And so you could have a huge corporation that has separate LLCs that are structured with less than 500 and then they might have applied that way, um, which as you saw, there was some public shaming and I'm sure that there will continue to be that um, ongoing. But for many of the programs, Self-employed, if for pandemic unemployment assistance, self-employed individuals can apply, contractors, business owners. Um, again, the threshold for PPP is under 500. Um, you know, hopefully that's one of the things that our organization along with others advocated to bring down because we recognize that American small business owners, 96% of the businesses here have less than uh, 50 employees. And here in California, 92% have less than 10. And so when we're thinking about who are the major job creators, it's very micro businesses. It's not this, these huge businesses. So valid concern, good, great, great question. Um, thank you for that as well. Uh, we have another um, question from, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, G. Salvatera. Salvatera. Um, how do you plan to keep working folks safe when all financial encouraging businesses to open up beyond telling them to wear masks? Yeah, so I think uh, CMR um, mentioned this new website uh, launched by the Governor's Task Force on Business and Jobs Recovery, uh, calling all Californians to shop, shop safe, shop local. Uh, and it's really uh, there to provide guidance for uh, not only business owners, but for um, you know, employees and, and uh, patrons uh, to understand, you know, number one, what are the different phases uh, in reopening, number two, 
uh, the health and safety guidelines that we are asking everyone to follow. Um, and that website is business.ca.gov slash shop safe, shop local backslash. Uh, and so we encourage folks to go to that website. Of course, uh, if you find uh, there are businesses that are not abiding by the health and safety guidelines, uh, please also feel free to contact your county uh, health uh, department. Uh, they are really the ones who are uh, on the ground monitoring uh, the health and safety uh, standards in your different communities. So I know we've gotten a couple of phone calls in my office saying, hey, uh, we see this company is not abiding by, you know, what the governor um, has, has uh, mandated. And so we encourage them to call your county or your city health department. Thank you for that. Um, the next one that's coming in uh, is from um, Angie Race English. Uh, I think this is for you, as the um, The Regional National Latino Entrepreneurship, um, how does your organization work? How are you reaching businesses, the outreach to those most vulnerable small businesses, especially those that don't speak English? Yeah, so one of the things that um, traditionally we do a lot of work in Spanish. Um, our organization, as I mentioned, is focused on building an inclusive economy that doesn't leave folks behind with a, a specific focus on under-resourced business owners, which includes communities of color and minorities. Um, part of that work has been always around supporting Latino um, business owners, entrepreneurs of color, and women. Um, during COVID, that was one of the things back in March that when we realized the significant crisis that we were going to be experiencing and that our vulnerable communities were going to be experiencing, we mapped out a plan to ensure that we had enough Spanish uh, language collateral. So in the initial months, we were doing weekly webinars with over 30 partners, um, both nat and these were at a national level, so they were accessible to everyone. Um, we also have added our channels of communication. So we have a weekly radio segment on Univision's uh, 1020 AM station, which is specifically for the city of Los Angeles. Um, we also have uh, been doing some Facebook Lives in partnership with the LA Area Chamber of Commerce, as well as Univision Posible and several different other um, organizations. We've done some in Spanish with GoBiz. Um, so the um, underserved, Latino community is an, of interest to us. We absolutely, I actually was thinking like, this, this information is getting a little redundant, you know, talking about PPP, I wonder if people already know about it, but in all actuality, that information was delayed. And part of the challenge was around not having materials translated in Spanish, not having guidances issued in Spanish. Um, the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce did an amazing job at translating some of the materials our organization on our venturize.org website also has some translated materials available. And so for us, we are absolutely always looking to partner uh, with traditional business organizations. But one of the things that our organization takes pride on is working with community-based and trusted um, organizations with um, business owners of diverse backgrounds. Yeah, and Hadar, I just wanna add that, you know, our COVID-19, um, uh, website also has a hotline and there are many language um, you know operators that are available and that number is 833-422-4255 and they are open seven days a week 8 a.m to 8 p.m and then there's also a statewide hotline for seniors and that is 833-544-2374 and that also has uh, multiple uh, language uh, capabilities for people who call in. There are operators that can speak multiple languages. You know, thank you for kind of touching on, on, on the PPE issue and, and the COVID especially. Um, we do have some questions regarding um, how small businesses are going to deal with that. Um, we have one uh, from Hansel uh, Cineros. Uh, what is being done about the businesses, with those businesses with reported cases? And how are we helping a address that problem when it comes to either helping them reopen or administering PPEs or testing? 
Well, um, you know, I, I don't know specifically about businesses, but, you know, I get a, a COVID-19 update every 10 o'clock uh, in, in the morning. Um, and so I keep up to date with who is, you know, opening and who is closing. But for those companies who have positive cases of COVID-19, I know that they are, uh, most of them are, are taking the initiative to uh, close and to clean and to uh, make sure when they do reopen that they have plexiglass, um, you know, separators, that they have signage, that they have the appropriate PPE available. Uh, I know the Office of Administrative, uh, Office of Emergency Services, as well as our Department of General Services, uh, they have been very active in trying to acquire as much PPE, uh, not only for state agencies, but for uh, folks who really need it. So again, you can email me at askfiona at treasure.ca.gov if you are having a hard time accessing PPE uh, equipment. I don't know if you have anything add to add at the federal level. I'm not sure um, what's been happening. There's a policy recommendation to um, ensure that businesses have access to PPE and testing. Um, that hasn't been passed, but there is a recommendation given that that's a huge need. Um, Additionally, when you visit the Shop Safe, Shop Local campaign site, uh, there is a button where you can get connected to safelymakingca.org, which will also, it's, it's essentially a marketplace for business owners to be able to, to purchase PPE. Um, so important to note, you know, I know that was one of the questions that we were getting a lot, like who, what are the local vendors that, that are connected? You know, interestingly enough, some of the businesses that were able to pivot and transition um, did create within themselves networks to be able to, you know, um, rapidly push, put out PPE. And so, um, you know, you can visit that site to be able to get gain access. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, you know, at, at another question regarding um, unemployment and, and there's another one, especially with the businesses that have shut down because of COVID. Um, uh, is the UI unemployment available for reduced hours? Um, yes, so there are a lot of programs uh, right now uh, through the EDD, but um, if you go to edd.ca.gov, uh, they do have a program for reduced work hours and also uh, a program if you are thinking about shutting your business uh, they have consultants who uh, will work with you and walk you through um, to try to make sure that you um, can stay open as long as possible. But we have extended, the federal government as well as the uh, state of California has uh, extended the unemployment uh, benefits for an additional uh, 20 weeks. So the total potential unemployment benefits you can receive could be up to 59 weeks. If you are eligible for the state's regular program, the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, as well as the federal emergency benefit program. So again, if you go to the website, www.edd.ca.gov, there are a lot of programs and the the FAQ sheet is very, very, very extensive. So I would encourage you all uh, to go to that website. Yeah, and I would just add the specific program that you would look at is the UI work sharing program, which I believe it's you would have you would you could reduce the hours by at least twenty percent, but not more than sixty percent in order to qualify for for your employees to qualify for partial payment payment through the UI program. Uh uh, the kind of touching on that topic and, and you know with myself working with um, your offices uh, there, there is you know schools about to come up um, especially on the local level I know on the state level there's a, a on the federal level there's a kind of going back of you know which states are going to reopen and how that distance learning is going to actually be laid out um, I have a question from a resident here um, Cindy Hernandez asking given that the current administration is thre threatening to cut federal funding to schools if they do not open uh, what is the current stance on how Hawthorne will respond to reopening schools while COVID is still rampant? Um, you know, th this would be a, a good kind of discussion to see how I could work with your offices to see if that were to occur um, as a council member here in the city of Hawthorne, what steps could I take if this scenario were to take place? 
Tamara, I don't know. I, I'm not a schools expert. I think that's probably a better question for Tony Thurman, our superintendent of public instruction, uh, who is, you know, the officer um, overseeing all public education. So I don't want to speak out of turn. I know things are changing every single day. So perhaps he can uh, join you on one of your, uh, you know, your, your web chats. Yeah, I, I don't have anything to add to that, um, but I definitely understand as working families are trying to figure out working from home, uh, having the possibility of starting to work, but no childcare availability, no school availability, how it can be a challenge. Um, and so I would see that being a great future discussion. Uh, thank you for, for touching on that. Um, I know on the local side, uh, next on our next town hall meeting, I'm going to have the superintendents from the three to four school districts that we have here in Hawthorne um, to address that that issue and that concern. Um, you know, if they, if they if they need to be pointed to, you know, for loans or anything like that, um, I know that they they can contact you guys for that kind of guidance yes. and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, to them, I'm hoping the superintendents will have a a, a plan. Um, I know from our case. Uh, they're telling us that they are going to be moving forward. Um, they're working now with the county to gain additional funding to give to certain residents that are in need access to being online and having that ability to get distance learning. That's going to be a very uh, difficult um, transition, uh, but they are moving forward and they're going to lay out everything for us uh, at the next town hall meetings uh, of how they're going to open the high schools and the middle schools here in Hawthorne um, during the pandemic. Um, Let's see. Uh, there, there's, hmm. we have another question here huh, uh, from A. Anya. Uh, what accountability measures is the state treasury passing over local governments so they use their rainy day funds? Uh, Sentinel Valley has almost 10 million in reserve, 9 million from CARES Act, but are not, prepared, are not providing PPE for essential workers, uh, claim to be overstaffed, and whose teachers have no idea how they will be functioning for the next year. Uh, and the added CARES money for the community. This is relevant because Hawthorne has a history of elected officials taking advantage of the budget to hide money. Um, I know on the, on the education side uh, that, as you mentioned before, that is um, the other individual that I'll, I'll be contacting. Um, and his name was um, Tony. Uh, Tony Thurman. He's Tony a Thurman. public instruction one of the eight constitutional officers. Uh, yeah, so having him uh, address some of these concerns, uh, I think would be beneficial. Uh, but on the treasury side uh, of, of uh, especially with your office and of course working with the state controller, um, the, the regulations that you're putting on, on local municipalities to ensure that they're governing uh, the taxpayers' money in an ethical way, um, what are those additional um, regulations and, and protocol measures that you've in place? Yeah, so under the CARES Act, as I mentioned, the state received $9.5 billion for COVID-related uh, expenses. Uh, local communities uh, received about $5 billion for those with populations over 500,000 people. Um, I know that in additional uh, packages like the HEROES Act, uh, more money is uh, hopefully gonna come to some of the smaller populated cities. Um, and then at that point, it's really up to the local officials like yourself, Hadar, or the school board members to ask for an accountability, right? An accounting of where the money is going, who is getting it. There should be transparency uh, in terms of all the, the federal dollars that are coming and where the money is going. Um, so that's what I would encourage, you know, your constituents if they have concerns about where they're going you know, asked to agendize uh, the uh, expenditures, um, you know, not only the receipts, but where the money has been spent from the federal government. I think that is legitimate ask. And I think elected officials have that responsibility to, to um, show and do that accounting uh, for our taxpayers. Uh, yeah, I, I know from the, the laundry list of new measures that you've placed have really helped um, local cities. Um, become more ethical, especially when dealing with taxpayers' money. Um, of course, you know, there's still outliers out there, um, but the fact that your office and the state controls office are weeding them out, ensuring that, you know, 
no more uh, shady business happening is it, wonderful. Um, but as you mentioned, it is up to other electeds to, if they see something wrong, if they know that there's something in the background that shouldn't be happening, sounding that alarm uh, should originally come from them first. Um, and, and it's up to also the residents to, to stress that point. If they see that occurring, uh, do not shy away from being vocal, going out and then and, and protesting against these unethical behaviors. Um, these are your tax money, tax money. We are working for you. You're technically the residents are our bosses. Um, so yet yeah, never have an issue with that. Um, especially here in Hawthorne, if there is anything like that, please even address that to my office. Um, I have no problem being transparent. I've learned that from, uh, our state treasurer for Yona Ma. Um, so yeah, that's, those are the measures we're taking. Um, and we'll continue to keep trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, now I know we have a few more minutes, uh, so I'll take a few more questions and, uh, let you two go. I know you guys have really busy schedules. Um, for the rest of the residents to know that I'll, I'll be on to answer more of the localized questions regarding how Hawthorne is going to take care of some of the questions that you brought up. Um, I do have one here. Uh, maybe if you can touch on maybe again for some people that are just coming on now, um, the programs that you two are uh, providing and the resources for small, small businesses, especially on a local level, um, how can they take advantage of that um, especially with, you know, if residents uh, or commercial tenants, how can they also take advantage of these programs when it comes to a whole array of things, especially dealing with this whole COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, again, on my website, www.treasure.ca.gov, I have my COVID-19 resource guides, and they are in a Google spreadsheet, so you can um, find it very easily. It'll say resources for small business, individuals, nonprofits, um, tax relief, as well as food relief, and then coming soon, we're going to compile a resource guide for seniors. So that is the best way. And again, my office is updating it in real time. So you're not going to be wasting your time applying for something that is not available anymore. So we are constantly tracking uh, what money is available. Some of it's been expired. You know, there's no more money. Some are coming daily from the private sector, especially a lot of these companies are uh, allocating and creating grant and loan programs. So we're also uploading it as soon as we get that information. But that is the best way. And again, if anyone has any questions uh, or you know, things you would like us to look at or refer to other agencies, uh, my dedicated uh, COVID-19 email is askfiona at treasure.ca.gov. And I'll just um, say, you know, again, venturize.org is the digital manifestation of our work. Um, although everyone here at the Small Business Majority team is pretty responsive via email or through our online uh, forms. If, uh, if anyone has any additional questions, they can always email us. Um, one of the things that I would say is this is one of the reasons why you want to be connected to your SBDC. Because if you work with a consultant um, at an SBDC and you get on their listserv, you, have, you gain access, right? And you're not the only one doing the searching and you're not the only one looking for these resources and when they get announced and when the application opens and closes. I'll tell you right now, um, in the city of LA, we have um, LISC LA has their grant open. Uh, I believe that part of it will be dedicated to within county, um, so unrestricted uh, parts of the city. Um, and they will have six rounds available. Um, and this is the first round that closes tomorrow. Um, that LISC, L-I-S-C, L-A, um, where you can find that one. Um, your local CDFIs are also great resources for tapping into capital. Uh, your, your small business development centers, as referenced by the treasurer, are your great resources and your tax dollars at work, uh, where you can connect to free technical assistance, one-on-one, -on -one. it's virtual now, you don't have to go anywhere. Um, so that's also an added uh, benefit. And um, you can absolutely ensure you can stay connected to our upcoming events. Um, and we typically will do these either regionally or um, some are very hyper local. And so um, always looking for partnership opportunities and the opportunity to share our resources further. Um, thank you guys again. Um, let's see, we'll take in one more question and then I'll move on to uh, the local side. Um, that'll be more on my plate to uh, handle. Um, 
let me check for one. I remember seeing one on. While you're checking for that oh, last yes. question, I was just going to mention, since you mentioned um, legal issues and tenant issues, I would just say mm -hmm. there are a variety of different um, nonprofits that are working to connect business owners to legal services where you do not have to pay. Um, one that's working statewide is Start Small, Think Big. Another UC Berkeley has office hours every Thursday with uh, legal experts and that are working pro bono to answer specific questions that business owners have. And more local, closer to home, we have LA Represents, which is a partnership uh, between Betsedic and they also have uh, resources outside of the city of Los Angeles. So if, since the city of Hawthorne is unincorporated LA, you still may be able to contact Betsedic directly. And so again, legal resources are one of those things that sometimes, you know, you just don't have enough resources to pay for, understandably so. Uh, again, your SBDC resource could connect you to one of these folks. Um, and just wanted to throw that out there since you did mention the tenant rights and I was going to slip my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to uh, know. No, Not many people talk yeah. about that. They really don't. And, and you mentioning that now is actually putting that on my radar now. So for me to disseminate that to my constituent base to help uh, those in need. I mean, it's, it's the virus is not going anywhere anytime soon. This is something we have to continue to fight, um, especially through the winter. Um, we don't know how it's going to look in a few months from now. It's always changing week by week. Um, but no, the more information we can give out um, to our residents, the constituent base, um, it helps. Um, let's see the last one before we'll have you guys close. Unless they're all local, then it's going to be more. Oh, um, this is a good one. Um, so for regarding PPEs, and I know you, you've got to touch base on this one already. Um, now, when it comes to plans on providing residents with additional PPEs or those nonprofits that provide them to residents or other organization, uh, like for BizSet, for example, um, <clears throat> especially for folks who do not have access to monetary income, with the PPE necessary to survive globally. Um, oh, what are the plans to provide those uh, resources to residents and nonprofits that are giving those out? I think one of the things that we're seeing is a lot of corporate partners step in and do um, massive distribution. Um, and so I know that some, some partnerships have been established now with local food banks to also distribute PPE. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I don't have the schedule in front of me. I don't know what that looks like, but again, maybe the county's health department might have some information there as to how to tap into free PPE. Sorry, I don't have yeah. any additional information. Yeah, and, and, and I would um, also um, echo Siamara. Um, I know one of our local organizations here, the uh, Asian Pacific American, um, it's, it's a papa. Uh, anyways, so, you know, the, the founder generously bought a lot of masks and he is giving it to different community members to distribute out. So I know I've had about 15,000 masks to distribute. Um, so if you do need masks, let Hadar know and I will get some down to Hadar, but everybody <laughs> in the community as we get masks and, and opportunities to give out masks, we are always looking for those community members that need it the most. So don't be shy, let your elected officials know uh, what your needs are, your wish lists are. I know I've been donating used towels to a local uh, church here that uh, bathes homeless people in, you know, they have like a three shower um, um, operation and they needed um, towels. So used towels. I mean, how many of us have a lot of towels that are mismatched that you're like, wow, they're great towels. I don't want to get rid of them, but I wish I had like two or three of the same. This is a great opportunity uh, to, to do something with some of your uh, household supplies, a great time to donate uh, to those organizations that could really use a lot of um, you know, things that we take for granted every day and that we um, you know, um, don't think about. But you know, there are a lot of needs, especially now. Uh, yeah, thank you for providing that. Now I know where to gain additional uh, PPEs. Um, I know I'm going to be starting uh, my own PPE uh, program. Um, we've worked with a few organizations to get donations now. Uh, we have a food program going um, for residents. Uh, we'll start a PPE giveaway at the same time for residents. Uh, but glad to know that you guys are there to kind of lead me in the direction of getting access to more. Um, yeah. 
Now, the last question on, on my side, uh, as Treasurer Ma, I know you mentioned that there are uh, programs and loans and, and especially for local municipalities. Um, what areas could I look into or, or funds that are now available to kind of address some of these, you know, community service needs um, or even this whole COVID-19 debt relief issue? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I know that there is more money hopefully coming to the cities uh, and the counties that don't need loan programs, but they really need backfill money, right? Mm -hmm. The general operating for sales taxes, for property taxes, you know, income taxes, everything has been deferred. Uh, and so we're hoping that we're going to have a good July 15th uh, for income taxes. And um, we keep track of all the money that comes in. And so the money is coming in um, higher than expected. So I'm hoping that July 15th will be uh, a good time for all of us. And there's that trickle down effect, right? As the federal government gives it to the state, give it to the local um, governments. But again, you know, let's work together. Let me know uh, what type of uh, resources, services um, that your community needs. Again, you know, anything that requires a, a a fiscal impact of financing loans, grants, uh, you know, I oversee or I sit on that board uh, that does oversee um, the money and the financing and the funding. So let me know and I can uh, try to put you in contact and see whether we can, you know, build that, meet that bridge. Uh, thank you for that. I know you've come in and helped the city of Hawthorne many times um, and you're very accessible. So I appreciate that. Um, I, I know if, as we're going forward that, that July 15th comes in, hopefully it comes to that as a, a good time for all of us and it does have that trickle down effect. Um, and, and it kind of goes back to why the census is so important. Um, having that filled out, having the, you know, the federal government, the state government know that this is how many people we have to address. These are who we have to take care of. So having an adequate count allows us to get the necessary funding to address all these issues. Um, I know for Hawthorne, we were wavering around, I think maybe 50, 55% um, completion. Um, I know it's been extended, so hopefully we can kind of tighten that up. Um, I've been pushing too, uh, but it all goes back to funding. Uh, the more we can kind of address how many people we have, the more I can go out to say, for example, the treasurer's office or the federal office and say, look, this is what I need. Um, I have X amount of residents are asking for this um, and it's proven here's on paper and we can get those resources. Um, again, I appreciate um, you two for coming out. Um, I thank you both for taking the time out. You guys are extremely busy. I feel blessed that you gave us, you know, the few moments of your time. Um, now, before I let you go, uh, before I give, you know, any last remarks or, uh, and we'll put up on the screen now as well, um, the uh, phone numbers and links that you've provided um, before I jump into local business. <laughs> Well, and, and, and there's an, another website uh, that the state has entered into is like a public private partnership. And this is for people who are unemployed, uh, but there is a website onwardca.org. And there is over a hundred uh, thousand different job opportunities for those who have lost their job and are looking for jobs. So I, I, I like to mention this because if you look at it, uh, it is very interactive and there are a lot of companies in California that are participating on this website. So if you've lost a job, looking for a job, onward, uh, ca.org is a really great resource as well. Um, I'll just conclude by saying the honor has been mine to, to, to join both of you that are really truly uh, public servants and supporting your constituencies in such unique ways during such very challenging times. And so uh, kudos to all of the amazing work that, that both of you are leaving, leading towards these challenging times. And I'll just end with saying, you know, whether it's around workforce resources, small business development resources, technical assistance, capital, business model, re revision, strategy, et cetera, this is, this is the time to try to get plugged into your ecosystem if you're not already connected. And so if today you learned anything new, I would also say, you know, share that with your social network of business owners in the community, in the hard to reach populations, because that's the power of building community, of ensuring that we're all taking care of each other and that our businesses and our local economies are supported. And so I just wanna, again, thank you for inviting us to be part of the conversation and to share the resources 
um, and we'll be sure to pass along some of those links we talked about. Uh, no, thank you guys. Um, the information you gave is was fruitful, especially the, the last part, uh, uh, Fiona, that you brought up about the unemployment. Um, there have been a lot of residents kind of concerned about that, especially about potential second shutdown. Um, so the fact that you were able to give us that um, tidbit of information, and we'll also provide all the links you gave us and this video on our website, and we'll be blasting that everywhere as well. Um, so individuals that couldn't go out on lunchtime, well, they'll, they'll jump on this evening um, and they'll have all their questions addressed. Uh, Ziomara, for you, thank you for coming out and giving all this information and the, the work that you're doing, uh, and, and, the, and especially in that community uh, where they feel that they're not being heard, they're not being taken care of, and you're taking the time to translate this important information. That's a huge step forward. Um, so I appreciate both of you uh, and these two strong positions, both women, uh, which is great. Um, I love it. Uh, and the fact that I'm learning from you guys, which is also a beautiful thing. Um, so I'm taking leadership from you guys. Um, so I appreciate it again. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any other questions regarding um, Ziomara or Fiona, we'll add their contacts and all their links and resources on my website. We'll also be providing that in an email blast to the entire city. Um, again, uh, thank you both. Um, I know you guys are busy, so I'll let you guys know. Okay. okay. Be safe. Thank Bye, guys. Zara. Thank you. Um, all right. So for um, the other questions on a more local side. Um, so yeah, now I'll, I'll touch base more on the uh, local questions that were um, kind of given out um, that I couldn't address online. Let's see. We'll start with um, Simon Carroll. Uh, yes, uh, will these be uh, recorded somewhere? Yeah, they'll be recorded and placed on uh, my website. I'll be providing access to that um, right after this, this call. It's also recorded on uh, Facebook Live. So there'll be two points of access to gain this video. Um, and any other questions that you might have after watching it, by all means, shoot me an email or call me. Uh, and I can address those as well. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Um, Ramos, uh, uh, your responsibility as government officials to make sure every single resident in the city you serve has PPE necessary to survive this pandemic. Yes, do I feel that is our, our responsibility? Yes, of course. Um, it is our responsibility to provide you guys the, the right resources, the adequate information to continue to move forward and, and get these things um, you know, to you as quickly as possible um, because you shouldn't suffer from uh, certain decisions being made, especially from the top level. Um, I'm going to start rolling out a PPE program. Um, I'm seeking donations. Right now we have roughly 2,500 PPEs that we're gonna start um, face masks. Uh, that we're gonna start giving out uh, their KN95s. Um, I, gave some last week to our frontline workers at the in-home support service uh, here in Hawthorne, uh, giving out some to Sentinel Valley. So now uh, it's all geared to the residents. Um, I'll be rolling that out with the increased food program that I'm holding as well. Um, so expect that email, expect the time and date for that. Um, I'll have people sign up for it. That way uh, I'm, I'll get to at least provide some sort of masks and, and uh, gloves to the community. Uh, I got a call from BizFed who are also going to jump in on this program and they're going to be distributing another additional thousand uh, masks uh, and gloves and gowns uh, as well to the residents. So uh, we're setting that up. We're going to roll that out starting next week. Um, so yes, I do believe it's our responsibility. Um, I'm moving forward and trying to get something done. Um, sadly, I'm, you know, if, this, if any of you guys have access or any uh, leads I can take advantage of to and I'll be using the state treasurer office now as well um, to gain more funding to get you guys these PPEs. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, regarding the question about um, universities, uh, I saw that Trump was deporting international students who do not attend classes in person. Is this effective immediately? Um, are there ways to appeal this? Uh, yes, there are, there are always ways to appeal this. You can contact your local um, council members, mayors, state officials, Congress um, reps, uh, and to ask them to fight and, and go against this, um, this measure. Um, is it effective immediately? You know, I'll, I'll go and check if you wanted to send me an email. 
um, I can address that question for you and, and take the time to really jump into it. Um, whether or not it's in effect now, I wouldn't want to give you the, the, the wrong answer. Um, so sending me that email, um, I'll be able to address that um, to you. Uh, as, as the state treasurer mentioned, Enzio Mara, that Tony would be the next individual I should contact to have on a town hall to really address the federal side when it comes to um, school budgeting. Um, let's see. <clears throat> um, uh, the one program I did also start um, when it came to PPEs um, is that uh, I've donated my council salary for the entire year. Um, and beginning of the next fiscal year uh, towards PPEs uh, for the residents. Um, so that additional funding uh, I'm going to start using to uh, provide PPEs to the residents. Um, I'm trying to see if I can use, I haven't, take, I haven't used the salary funds before, um, but I was able to reallocate this year's funds um, to place towards anything COVID-19 related when it comes to whether residents are being um, PPE or unemployment needs or food programs. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm talking the talk and walking at the same time. Um, but yeah, uh, those are additional things I'm doing. If you can contact other local uh, council members in the city of Hawthorne, um, have them also uh, use their stipends um, or any additional funds in their office to help address this issue. Uh, it would go a long way. Uh, I'm there going to bat for you guys as well. Um, but the more the merrier. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, from Rebecca Ruiz, does uh, rent control apply to the city of Hawthorne? And if so, what percentage can they raise it? Um, so for now, I know that the state of California had a rent control cap for the entire state. Uh, I believe it was a, um, I wanna say between three to 5% increase a, a year. It can't, it can't be anything above that. Um, does the city of Hawthorne have its own um, rent control uh, measure? Uh, no, uh, we do not. Uh, the state implemented one starting this, uh, I want to say last year, December. Um, I pushed to you know, ex you know, have that program start um, in October, a little earlier. Uh, but for the city of Hawthorne having its own, uh, no, there isn't one in place now. Uh, that is a local um, decision that uh, could be made. So uh, contacting other council members, um, addressing that issue and seeing um, how we can go about that um, is always good. And it's always, have, it's always good to have that kind of open discussion. So uh, by all means, um, you know, if you're feeling that kind of struggle and you think that's something we should address and look into, uh, contact my office, send me an email. Uh, and the same thing with all the other members as well. Um, again, for anything like this, it always takes the rule. It's the rule of three. Um, just need to get the ear of three members to vote. Uh, and things will get done. Uh, but I can also, uh, yeah, please send me anything in regards to that kind of endeavor, uh, why you believe it's good and, and at what cap and things of that nature. Uh, the more information I get from you guys, the more I can use uh, while at these council meetings. <clears throat> um, Maya Farley, uh, thank you for the question of coming in on asking, let's see. Oh, I just just saw it two seconds ago. Ah, um, for uh, how to join the Citizens Fireworks Committee. So I, I have seen a lot of uh, I've received a lot of uh, complaints, and thank you for using the survey and the and the reporting. Um, Hawthorne PD and code enforcement and our city attorney have went out and addressed multiple homes. Um, they've constantly confiscated thousands upon thousands of illegal fireworks. Um, we're still addressing all the other ones. Of course, you know, we couldn't hit all of them all at the same time, but we're slowly going through all of the emails and, you know, complaint forms that are coming in anonymously, which is great. Um, the, the one thing I would say is for the Citizens Fireworks Committee, uh, we're going to be having our first <clears throat> uh, meeting. I want to try and have it hold this Saturday um, at, a, at, a, at a time where I can get, you know, the, the residents on board. Um, so there's a link I'm going to provide. Just email me at haydarwad at haydarhawthorne.com. Um, ask that you want to be uh, on the committee. I'll be giving out calls starting tonight and tomorrow, um, calling back all the residents that wanted to join the committee and asking, you know, what time would you be available to have these quarterly meetings? Um, 
Our first one being, you know, if we can do it this Saturday, that would be great. But jumping on board and trying to see how we can address the fireworks issue. Again, if you sent in the complaint, it is being addressed. Um, remember, a lot were coming in. This was a a substantial increase from all the other years. Uh, it has been. It was. It was. It was excessive. It was a lot. It was too much, um, and it was. You know, it was unneeded. The fact that you have individuals that couldn't sleep, you have veterans who are, are suffering from PTSD, um, children who can't go to sleep, pets that are going crazy at night. Um, it was just excessive. Um, so yeah, we're also going to have the discussion of looking into if we want to have because they're already banned now, the illegal fireworks, but increasing that fine from 1,000 to something substantially higher. At the same time, uh, you're looking into banning um, safe and sane fireworks as well. Um, I'll be sending out a, a petition um, and a form. We'll see what you guys say. Um, if there's a resounding push for it, then of course, we'll put that on the agenda coming up. And uh, I wanna address this issue. It's gone too long, it's too much. Um, but yeah, go on to email me at haterwad at haterhawthorne.com. Um, say you want to join that committee and uh, we'll set up our first meeting for this week. Let's see. Um, uh, Victor Guerrero, uh, um, regarding the apartment owners and their pools. Um, my position on that is following what the CDC and the county is, is looking into if they you know, if the cases start to increase rapid, rapidly, um, it, it really all depends on, on that. Uh, if they decide to do another stay at home uh, shutdown, as many of you know, have heard that Eric Garcetti mentioned this uh, and the county has touched on this. And even though it's, they say that we may be doing a little better, um, but we're looking at it day by day. Uh, if the second we reopen City Hall, uh, that kind of gives the green light for other things to start moving forward uh, smoother. Um, but there is a, um, there's a link uh, that I've sent out uh, for the Tenant Protection Act of 2019 uh, pools, and it gives the county's protocol on it. Um, it is now legal, uh, illegal for residents and landlords to raise, um, that, that was on the tenant, um, but for, for this one, uh, going back on the, the rent, as before I forget, it just hit my head, it is illegal for resident landlords, residential landlords to raise rent more than 5%. Uh, plus the local rate of inflation in one year. Um, for the tenant side regarding pools, um, it goes back to how the virus is going to be functioning and how it grows. Um, we had plans to open City Hall this Tuesday. We had to delay that for two weeks. Um, so yeah, we're taking that day by day. Uh, if you're not being answered regarding your pool, uh, please um, call me, especially the Hawthorne pool. I know it was scheduled to open as well, but again, it always comes back to the whole COVID-19 issue, and we don't want residents to be in infected or inflicted um, by it spreading even more. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. I have a question here. We be providing rent freeze control to low-income families in, oh, this is from Lawrence Valencia. Will you be providing rent freeze or control to low-income families in Hawthorne, given that unemployment benefits will no longer be given out an extra 600. Um, yeah, th there were talks about that where they, they're going to start shrinking the program or ending it. Um, there is, there were talks of another relief package coming in. So hopefully that will not be the case. But if it does continue to where we saw from before, um, we're at another stay at home uh, kind of level, uh, individual not going back to work, then yes, extending that, that rent control fees or looking ways to help low income families is something we're going to look into. Um, I, the last town hall, I had Senator Bradford um, here discussing a bill he's working with with uh, Tony Atkins, who is the Senate pro tem. Uh, they have a bill that's going to be addressing both the residential and commercial side, where uh, there's a, re a huge relief package. I've sent a letter of support. It's an amazing um, bill of reform, especially for both the tenants and res uh, on the residential side and commercial tenants and landlords. Uh, it's addressing both. Uh, it got a bill number, it's going through the committee. So hopefully within the next few weeks, um, it'll be passed. Uh, and when that happens, I am bringing Senator Bradford back in to address uh, how both the landlords and tenants could take advantage of this new bill package. Uh, I know I had a few more questions. Uh, 
Uh, regarding, let's see, how far I end? Uh, for the individuals from the Good Neighbors, SB Community Care, and Earth Streets of LA, um, and the Hawthorne, uh, Hawthorne Abolitionist Alliance, Abolitionist Alliance, sorry if, uh, uh, if I kind of mispronounced some of the names. Um, no, by all means, um, I am always free and open to uh, answer questions um, and have a sit down. Um, if you guys are available, you know, I'm available after this town hall. If you guys wanted to come down to the office, that's no problem at all. Um, and discussing some of the questions and, and, and um, ideas that you guys have. Um, I'm always open. It's, it's no problem at all with me. Um, so contact me. Uh, I know some of you have my numbers already. Um, if you guys in the area, swing on by. I'm here. Um, and I can listen to and address a lot of the concerns and questions and funding matters um, right here on the spot. Um, let me see. Uh, Lawrence, regarding the um, plans for reallocating Hawthorne uh, police funding towards um, our communities, our students from Hawthorne High are struggling to get proper education. Meanwhile, our police have helicopters. Do you see the problem? Or perhaps the funds should be reallocated towards a Hawthorne hospital, given we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I've I brought this up uh, many times. Uh, I had a town hall regarding the topic with um, good neighbors of Haw uh, <clears throat> good neighbors of Hawthorne uh, with the GUD and the ears to the street of LA. Um, uh, I addressed that what, what my my feelings are on that and how. Yes, when it comes to gaining more funding, especially to the high school students and for, um, especially on the community outreach when it comes to mental health and these counselors for students. Um, that's why I'm having the superintendents come on. Uh, we wanna see how we can start working together, um, especially with the whole budgeting. Um, and now with the state treasurer informing me of the individual I should be contacting on the federal side, uh, including for the local side. Um, that's great. Um, I want to bring those individuals together as well to see how we can get this whole thing set forward and, and fixed. Um, but again, uh, go back to those videos. Um, I addressed all of those questions. Um, and again, if you guys want to come out, I'm here in the office, um, by all means. Uh, I'll answer a few more questions. I missed here on Facebook and on here. Uh, we'd like to know, about, oh, uh, so to help our local businesses. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going to provide a link of a, of a council meeting uh, that we held, I wanna say right after, a couple, couple meetings after we had the first shutdown. Um, so when the whole eviction moratorium came out, it was also to address commercial tenants. Um, they were feeling the squeeze of it too. Um, so I was able to have that that moratorium also cover uh, commercial tenants. For the businesses that are suffering locally, um, there are a plethora of loans and business and small business loans to help them out of their, uh, their struggle. Uh, Fiona Ma mentioned uh, there are links on her website that I'll also be promoting out and pushing out, putting on my website of, of the uh, of, of local, um, financial advisor and uh, loan programs that could be used to help kind of get yourself out of that hole and to continue moving forward, especially when it comes to payroll and getting your employees back on, uh, back on, back in work. Um, so please go, uh, uh, go on my website as I put them up there, um, look at your emails and check them as I provide those links. Um, it'll have all the loans available for small businesses um, and for like, uh, for PPEs and payroll and to kind of give you financial advice to help yourself get out. Um, regarding on my side, uh, I'm trying to do everything on my end to um, find more funds to help struggling businesses um, and finding out more loans, getting out the information. Uh, we are being easier on uh, the business license and fee. We're reducing that. Um, the eviction moratorium, if, if there's more businesses closing down because of it uh, on the commercial side, we will have to address that as well and, and any other ways that we can move forward. Because um, we don't want to lose, Hawthorne is predominantly built on small businesses, small to mid-sized businesses. The second you lose that, you lose what Hawthorne was essentially built on. Um, so know that I'm doing everything on my side to help this 
help small businesses, um, especially locally, get out. Um, one thing I've done for uh, for my own office is the food program that I'm rolling out with some of the restaurants here. Um, uh, we're going to start rolling out on the on the small mom and pop shops as well. Is the donations I get to provide the food. Uh, the restaurants are able to use that to hire back their employees um, to start working at the office and back in the kitchen and allowing these restaurants to kind of get back on their feet. Um, again, this is me and myself. Uh, um, I'm trying to push the council to come up with more ideas as well. Um, that I know we've had, we've allowed outside dining to help um, struggling restaurants. Uh, we're going to look into different ways of acquiring business districts to help with the taxing. Um, yeah, we're, I'm looking at it as kind of my area of, you know, finance and business. Um, so I'm addressing it. If any other issues or any ideas, by all means, swing my way. Maybe I've, I don't know everything. So maybe there's an idea I missed um or a problem that i'm not aware of uh, if you're a small business please contact me um i can working with the chamber to find other resources as well to provide to these businesses the last thing i want is to have laundry list of closed down businesses i mean we already have the empty hawthorne mall um there are already other places shutting down i don't need more i don't want more uh and that's going to increase our unemployment rate especially here in the city of hawthorne um so yeah i know that's always a top priority safety for the residents and funding for both the tenants, landlords, and small business, uh, small business community. Um, so uh, the bill, just to kind of let everyone know, uh, for Senator Bradford, it was SB 1410. Uh, this bill provides eviction protection to tenants unable to make payments during COVID-19 pandemic by providing residential landlords and mobile home park owners voluntary financial tax incentives that keep tenants housed. Uh, given COVID-19 and its impact on California, the state must take action to ensure it does not lose existing rental housing stock. This proposal provides immediate relief to tenants uh, in need to ensure that they are not evicted as a result of COVID-19 and or its economic impacts, while also protecting landlords who operate in good faith and otherwise face foreclosure, which could result in tenant eviction. Uh, this is meant for both sides of uh, on the commercial and residential side. So uh, please be aware that I'm watching this, making sure that you know it gets all the support it needs to get passed. Uh, it helps everyone, and everyone kind of needs this extra help. Um, the other thing <clears throat> on the COVID side, I've gotten a lot of emails and questions about that. Um, sadly, with the more increase in testing, um, uh, the county is pr pr prioritizing. Uh, those who show symptoms, testing at the center is open, but currently booked through the month of July at this time. Um, but if you have any other questions or resources, um, email me at haterawad at haterhawthorne.com uh, or visit haterhawthorne.com. Um, you know, unfortunately, with the whole success of us running such a successful testing center, it's been expanding to the point where it's been booked up for that long, um, which is a good and bad thing. Like I'm glad the residents going out there, taking you know, being aware of this uh, pandemic still being out there, and taking the necessary steps to check themselves. Um, I'm working now with the county and the state to increase it. Um, when I first brought it in, in the beginning, uh, trying to get all these numbers and making sure that we had enough people getting tested uh, was kind of a struggle. But then it blew up. Um, more people were able to get tested. They didn't have to show symptoms. They did not have to pay or include insurance. Um, so please, we'll uh, bear with the center. I know they're going to be opening up more spaces um, and more centers as well. We're working here in Hawthorne to increase the amount we can do daily. Uh, we're at 144 now. We're trying to hit 200, um, but then it goes back to funding from the state. Um, uh, I have uh, <clears throat> one other additional thing before I go back to a few more questions before I wrap up. Um, I have additional virtual virtual office hours every Monday now at six to seven. Um, this way I can get individuals that, you know, can't be here on the afternoon um, or during lunch. They can catch me at uh, Monday through six to seven. Uh, and every first, third and fifth Thursday at 12 to one on facebook.com, Hater Hawthorne. Um, those are also my additional office hours. So I'm going to be uh, giving more of my time, especially during now the second transition of, of we don't know where the state or the county is going to take us when it goes into the second uh, winter with uh, COVID. Um, and bi-monthly virtual town hall meetings every second and fourth. 
Thursday uh, from 12 to 1, uh, as you guys are seeing today. Uh, <clears throat> I'll do a few more on Facebook, and then I have two participants who raised their hand, and I'll have them ask their question um, online. Uh, you have insurance from a different state. Uh, Ortega Viv, uh, your question on if you have insurance from a different state, will it still cover a COVID test here in California? Um, luckily, uh, uh, you don't have to be, you don't have to provide your insurance um, for the testing centers here. Um, you just have to sign up. So please go on to lhi.care. Um, I know the one in Hawthorne, it, it's, it's been booked up um weeks in advance um, but for all the other uh testing centers uh, there there are still available appointments they're opening new ones i know santa monica is going to be opening one soon as well um so please know you don't need to have insurance or, or symptoms to go to these testing center um it, it does say it on their list especially when you sign up provide your insurance information you don't have to um it, it's just there as you know there's there's copying and pasting what they usually used to do before uh, just to get this program up and running when I reached the uh, Mark Ridley, uh, Mark, our county supervisor, Mark Ridley Thomas, and uh, our governor's office to get this testing center. Um, I am working with another organization called My COVID MD. Um, they are a, a, a nonprofit that are going to be trying to provide antibody testing here in the city of Hawthorne. Um, <clears throat> we're working out something now at RFK. Um, because I'm looking at if, if in July the governor and the county say there there isn't more there's any funding left for testing, um, I'm working now with a different organization to provide at least antibody testing, which would be free to the residents. Uh, we're working on trying to get to 150 tests a week. They'll be providing food. They're providing a, you know, a, a DJ setup. It'll be mobile uh, drive-through, um, and you'll have it's in and out within 15 to 20 minutes. It's not going to be like the Dodger Stadium where you have this long line. Um, we'll also be providing food bags. So every person that comes out and gets tested, they'll be provided a gift bag, um, a food bag, as well as uh, there'll be a DJ set up. They're just trying to make this whole process because it's a little tense, uh, more enjoyable and um, easy to get through. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on that. I'm gaining funding for that. Uh, again, it's very hard to gain funding um, when you're just one individual. Uh, but if, if any of you guys want to help out or know anyone that would want to jump in, that would be great. Uh, I'm working with the Steve Cronk and uh, the Rams and the uh, Clippers, LA Clippers, to get funding for this first antibody testing for Hawthorne. So hopefully within the next few weeks, I get some, um, some additional funding to get this thing moving faster, but it'll be the first antibody testing um, that our residents can take advantage of. Uh, <clears throat> Lourdes Mendoza, uh, your question on why is so many places empty? along Hawthorne Boulevard, besides looks so bad, it is all out of trash, that smell really bad, is annoying in charge. Oh, is anyone in charge? I wish I could walk Hawthorne, I could walk Hawthorne Boulevard and enjoy a nice walk and see our business flourish. Um, I agree with you. Um, yes, it's, it's becoming a little more drastic. You, you do have more uh, trash for some reason being put on the street. You have more businesses um, uh, boarding up their uh, facilities. Um, it used to be a place where you can walk down and enjoy it and go down the street. Um, now it's, it's I, I can see where your concern is. Um, is there anyone in charge? I know I'm looking after the parts i um, trying to push through and cleaning up. Um, contacting other members. I'll be addressing at the next council meeting, especially this issue. Um, we do have to do a better job of, you know, that's why protecting the small businesses and making sure these stops stay open is a, a huge um, a huge deal. Um, the more places you have closed down or not you know, having participants inside, the more things start to deteriorate. Um, so yes, I'm working with the chamber to address these issues, to have more um, resources, to have our businesses up and running so we can have more people out on the street and enjoying um, Hawthorne Boulevard. Um, unfortunately, we have this pandemic to deal with, but luckily on the city budget side, um, we are able to have enough cushion to kind of go throughout this fiscal year. Um, so I can focus more predominantly on addressing trash is a big one. Trash, the homelessness issue, um, community services, as well as um, the small businesses and renter and landlord relief. Uh, those are big, huge concerns. Uh, I'm always working, trying to find new ways of getting information and getting new ideas implemented 
to ease um, these issues. You don't have to be dealing with the COVID-19 and unemployment. And on top of all of that, a city with, um, as you're saying, trash and, uh, and boarded up windows. So I agree with you. Um, I'll, I'll work even harder on that case. Um, and I'll bring out the next council meeting uh, that the other council members should be aware and address these, this specific issue as well. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, I'll take a couple more. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank Whittle, if you're still on, uh, I'm going to allow you to, if you wanted to ask your question live, I'm gonna allow you that, that, that chance uh, if you're still there um, uh, and you can go. Now, uh, hello, Frank Whittle. Frank, are you there? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Victor Guerrero, uh, I, I don't know if you're, you have your hand raised if you want to ask a question uh, live. Um, I'll give you this moment right now. It's not okay. Thank you. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, I think that was. Oh, I guess Frank was muted. Oh, no, hold on. I'll give you one more. Shot. Let's see here. Frank, are you able to? Can you unmute yourself from your end or? Yes, no, maybe. <clears throat> uh, well, I'll, I'll leave you there if you can, um, you know, let me know. Uh, I wonder why that's, okay. Uh, Fanny Butler, um, if you're there, um, I know you raised your hand for a question. Um, if you are able to talk, um, go ahead, you're on. Nope. Uh, Fanny, I'm going to let you, there you go. You're on. If you can unmute your side, that'd be great. Uh, Victor Guerrero, oh, for, uh, Fanny, are you, uh, are you there? No. Uh, Victor, I'm gonna let you jump on now. <clears throat> if you're able to unmute yourself and uh, ask a question. Okay, I had a question about uh, the policy of large trash pickup. Is there a particular day of the week that that's done here in the city of Hawthorne or is that something that uh, our building calls to have done or how does that work? Because I noticed that that's being done in front of my building, a, a particular uh, a, a particular corner of the building, 120th and Manor. They're using that corner to put all their large trash items, you know, like desks or drawers or mattresses or <laughs> to broken TVs or refrigerators or whatever. Oh, and as the uh, so in the uh, facility in front of you, it's like an apartment complex, a condo. Um, what is it? It is. I live in an apartment complex right there mm -hmm. at, at uh, that's between Ramona and Manor on 120th okay. Street. Um, and it's, you know, uh, I, so, oh, I was just going to say it's managed by uh, R, RF or RK or uh, RK uh, Residential Services. RK Residential Services. Um, so yeah, th there there was a there was an agreement made between Republic Service and the city of Hawthorne where they, they do offer um, 
free uh, bulk trash pickup, um, mm -hmm. especially to uh, apartment complexes as yourself. Um, I know during the beginning of COVID, they kind of, they stopped that program, I guess, for, for their saying they had funding issues, but I know it's kind of restarted. Um, so, you know, give, <clears throat> I have the phone number that uh, you can call for your, your, you can either call, have your uh, management company call or yourself call. Um, okay. And they'll, you'll set, they'll set the date with you. Um, you know, try and have all of it at one, one shot because they do kind of have a, there's a set limit on how many times each apartment complex or condominium complex could um, have a bulk pickup. Okay. Um, but, but it's quite a bit. Um, so let me just, I, ha I have your um, contact information here. Um, so I'll send you over all that contact information. Um, okay. And yeah, but you can, uh, so how many, uh, how big of an item are you looking like, is a few bins or are you just talking about like actual bulky items? Well, when, for instance, when I came uh, back from uh, um, a weekend uh, getaway <laughs> this Monday, I saw, um, you know, and I've seen this before. I've seen mattresses. I've seen old TVs. I've seen refrigerators. I've seen broken uh, dresser drawers and the drawers just laying there. Stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Um, that they can take care of. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, expect that I'll send you over the contact after this call, um, give them a call and set that up with yourself and, um, uh, for public service. Uh, but there is a policy and plan set already in motion, um, okay. for you guys to take advantage of. <clears throat> okay, good. Thank you. Nope. Thank you. Uh, Fanny, uh, I saw your question. Um, I don't, I don't know where it went for a second, uh, but if you want to jump on and ask, um, keep your hand raised. If not, oh, here we go. Um, let me ask one, a couple more, and then if anyone else has any kind of questions they want to ask um, live or anything of that nature, um, by all means, let's see. Because the last one we're going to be doing, I'll do a couple more. Uh, to, to, to the good neighbors and um, ears to the streets of LA <clears throat> and the HHA organization, um, if you wanted to contact, have some time, um, you know, I'll give you guys a call right after this meeting um, and see what uh, what day we can pick out and uh, get that locked and loaded. Uh, is there any other questions? I'm going to wrap up in the next five minutes. Um, again, I'll have another one on this coming Monday, which are office hours. Um, we're going to do it a little differently. I want to have it set up to where if, if you want that more intimate kind of, um, you didn't want to be live on air or have your question answered that way. Uh, I'm going to have it set up where you can take individual 15 minute blocks of time within those hours. Um, and it, can, it will just be like a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but the beginning part I'll do as an, as a virtual office hours and then cut into a more um, up, like an appointment kind of uh, setup. Um, so make sure to be aware of that email going out. <clears throat> uh, I think I addressed what was here. Um, again, if there's anyone else. Um, no. Okay. Well, again, thank you guys for coming out. I'll be sending all this stuff out uh, shortly. And a blast email. I have it posted on Facebook and on my website. Um, I'll be out there on um, Monday again. And at the same time, uh, we do have uh, the food program out there now every day. Um, right now it's at Medici. Um, so sign up on the Eventbrite page, which you can also find a link to on my website. Uh, on the other side, uh, I will be starting a PPE program, giving out KN95 masks. Uh, I'm going to start with five per household and it's going to be uh the same kind of sign up on the event bright side for the facebook i mean for the fireworks uh citizen committee please send all your uh requests in i want to say by tonight to friday around six after that i'm going to call the residents that wanted to be on it and um you know if they're if they're one of the five you know one of the eight we'll we'll see how how uh how many I can get on there. I know we have a lot, so I, I do have to, you know, make it a, a committee, an ad hoc committee that can actually, you know, get things done. Uh, but we're going to have our first meeting this Saturday. So please, if you want to be on it, um, send me your inquiry, send me that you want to join. 
um, I'll call and um, we'll set our first meeting and have all the other complaints that we saw on 4th of July addressed. Um, I thank you again, guys. Thank you. Um, kind of getting a little uh, dry mouth, but I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, I'll see you Saturday with the fireworks. Uh, I'll see you Monday for office hours. Um, and Tuesday, we have a council meeting coming up uh, on the 14th. So if there are any other issues that you want to see addressed, this is we're, we're at council where I can bring it up, create policy. Um, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Jen. That's actually a very good, uh, very good suggestion. Um, so before I leave, again, uh, website is haydarhawthorne.com. Um, go on there for information on everything I've mentioned, uh, city budget. I've also put the link on there as well. Um, the other additional office hours, the food program, the PPE, a lot. Um, so I'm out here um, proving that I'm working. I work for you guys. So, you know, my time is yours. Um, and the email is the same thing. Uh, HaderAwad at HaderHawthorne.com. And I have, <clears throat> let's see, make sure that I have that up on there on the website. Yes. Uh, for COVID, uh, the, the, um, the website to go to check if you can guys, uh, you know, if there's any appointments left. It doesn't have to be Hawthorne. They'll have all the open uh, testing facilities there on the site. Uh, so please also check for that. Um, I appreciate you guys watching all the other videos. There's a lot of them are getting a lot of uh, views. So I'm apparently doing something right. So again, uh, thank you guys. Um, email, call, text, um, or jump online. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, but be safe. Remember, it's still out there, the pandemic. The next one, we're going to try and use the school board district members to come on here and see how the rollout's going to be. Um, again, thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you guys soon.